What's going on guys, Corey Hillier back again with another YouTube video. Today we're going to be going over the 5 biggest fat loss mistakes that people make when they're trying to lose weight. I'm going to tell you guys some ways that you can avoid these mistakes as much as possible. If you guys find this video informative or like it, make sure to drop a like on the video and click subscribe so you never miss another video. I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel up a lot this summer as I'm going to post a ton of videos throughout the whole summer. So anyways, let's get into number 1. So the first mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're trying to lose weight is that they don't eat enough. So as we know, in order to lose weight, you're going to have to eat in a caloric deficit. So that means you're going to have to burn more calories than you consume throughout the day. So first, you're going to have to figure out your maintenance calories. So in order to figure that out, you're going to have to go on Google to find a total daily energy expenditure calculator, or you can get a, uh, an app called MyFitnessPal, and you can just type in all your information there, and that'll give you a rough estimate of where your maintenance calories are. So if you eat that maintenance calories and exercise at the level that you put into that calculator, you should stay around the same weight. So in order to lose weight, you're going to have to eat a little bit less than those maintenance calories. The good range is anywhere from 500 calories or less. So if you eat in a calorie deficit of 500 calories per day, you should lose about a pound per week. So the problem occurs when a lot of people don't really track their calories and they just lower their calories a ton. And it'll be way lower than a 500 calorie deficit. And this way they're going to be losing a lot of weight fast, which looks good on the scale, but you're going to be losing a lot of weight that isn't fat and you're going to be losing, first off, you're going to lose a lot of water at the beginning of your cut, but you're also going to be losing a lot of muscle if you are in a deficit of more than 500. So personally for me, I'm currently eating in a 200 to 300 calorie deficit, which is allowing me to lose about a half pound per week. I do recommend eating in a 200 to 300 calorie deficit because you will lose weight very slowly, but you have to understand that it is a long-term game when you're trying to lose weight. But that weight you're going to be losing is primarily fat. You're going to be able to keep as much muscle on as possible. And that's the goal when you're trying to shred. So at the end of the day, don't eat in a massive caloric deficit because you don't want to lose that harder muscle that you've been putting on for the past couple of months or the past couple of years. Oh, hey guys. So another mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're trying to lose weight is doing way too much cardio. Some people think that cardio is just this like holy grail of how you lose weight. If you do more cardio, you're gonna lose more weight. And yes, that's true. You're gonna burn more calories if you do more cardio. But like I said before, this comes down to calories in, calories out. If you do cardio and you're in a massive caloric deficit, you're gonna lose a lot of weight. But like I said before, you're gonna lose a lot of strength. You're gonna lose a lot of muscle in that cut and you don't wanna do that. So personally for me, I'm doing cardio twice per week. I'm burning about an extra 300 to 400 calories than I would if I wasn't doing cardio. You don't have to do cardio every single day. You don't have to do it for an hour. You don't have to go out and run a marathon. You can do anything. You can go play basketball outside. You can go walk your dog for an extra long walk. You can, you can do anything, anything that you enjoy doing. It doesn't have to be very intense. It doesn't have to be high intensity interval training. It can be low you know slow walking on the treadmill that's personally what i do i just do slow walking on an incline on a treadmill for about 20 minutes you can do longer sessions than that you can do more than two sessions but like i said for me personally i'm doing two sessions so eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to get into a plateau where you're not going to be losing any more weight so you can do one of two things you can either increase your cardio or decrease your calories now i personally am going to keep adding in cardio sessions as i get deeper and deeper into my cut because you can always add in more cardio sessions currently i'm only doing two cardio sessions per week Eventually, I'm going to do three, four, maybe five near the end of my cut. This way, I can keep my calories at the same amount, and that way, I'm not really going to be starving myself. I know exactly what meals I'm going to be having. I know how many calories, how many, how many grams of protein and everything that I need in order to keep as much muscle on me as possible during this cut. And that way, I'm still in a deficit as well. If you decrease your calories and don't add in more cardio, you're just going to end up starving yourself. You're not going to get as many nutrients in as you need. You're not going to get enough protein in, and that's going to be detrimental to your gains. You're not going to be able to keep as much strength and as much muscle on as you want during your cut. So if you guys are doing a cut right now and you're not sure how many cardio sessions you should have during the week, I'd recommend maybe doing one to two cardio sessions per week. And if you're losing weight, then you can stick with that amount. But once you get into a plateau, then you can start adding in more sessions, like three, four, or five cardio sessions per week. So 
So the third mistake that a lot of people make is overtraining. Now I know what a lot of you guys are going to be saying, oh yeah, people don't overtrain, people don't train hard enough, you'll never overtrain, but that's not necessarily true. So a lot of people will think that if they burn more calories during their workout, that they're actually having a better workout. But that's not necessarily true. A lot of people will increase their sets, increase their reps, and everything like that, thinking that they're gonna be burning more calories that way, but you're also not gonna get the strength benefits as you were if you were doing less sets, but more weight. When you're in a calorie deficit, it's almost inevitable you're gonna lose strength to some extent. Now you can limit how much strength you're gonna lose by, like I said, if you're in a caloric deficit of 200, 300, not gonna lose that much strength every time. If you're eating at a higher caloric deficit, yes, you're gonna lose more strength that way. Let's say you're eating good and you're eating in a 200, 300 calorie deficit, you're doing a couple cardio sessions per week, but you get to your training and you're training, you know, five sets of 15 to 20 reps for multiple exercises. So you're doing a total of maybe 30 sets and a ton of reps per set, and you think you're burning a lot of calories during that workout, but you're actually overtrained. In order to make sure that you're keeping your muscle, you need to be training for strength and making sure that your strength is still there. So that way you can tell if you're losing muscle or not. So what I recommend is for your compound movements such as bench, deadlift, squat, train in about four to five sets per session and those sets be about five to eight reps. That way you can train for strength. But then when you get into your isolation uh, movements for those muscles, you can train in a rep range of 10 to 12 reps. At the end of the day, just don't overdo it. You don't have to do 30 sets. You don't have to do 40 sets. You don't have to do these you know, 15 to 20 reps per set because at the end of the day, that's not gonna help you anymore. It's actually gonna hurt you. Make sure your strength is staying at the same level maybe even getting better, but at the end of the day, it's probably going to shrink a little bit during your caloric deficit, but you wanna minimize that as much as possible. So anyway, speaking of training, I'm gonna go hit a massive arm workout, and I'm gonna bring you guys along, so let's go. So we just got done with the workout and now we're having our post-workout meal, which I'm having protein oats today. Uh, honestly, my favorite meal. I usually have it before my workout, but today I decided to have it after my workout. I'll have the calories and everything up here, but honestly, this is my favorite meal. But this kind of gets me into my next mistake that people make, and that is binge eating. So what you gotta understand first is that every single person binge eats to some extent. I binge eat, you binge eat, your favorite bodybuilders binge eat. See bum even binge eats to some extent too. So tell me if this sounds familiar. Monday through Friday, you count your calories, you work out really hard, and you do all your cardio. Everything's looking good, you're in a caloric deficit all those days. You get to the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday night, you wanna go out to the bars with your friends. You have a few drinks, maybe more than just a few drinks. And then you come home, you eat some pizza, you have some chips, you have some ice cream, and then you go to bed. You wake up the next morning, you have a massive hangover, you don't feel like you wanna do any sort of physical activity, you don't wanna work out, you don't wanna do cardio, you don't even wanna eat healthy, you decide to eat like crap again on Sunday, and then you decide that you're gonna start it back up on Monday, and then again, just repeats the process, Monday through Friday you're doing good, Saturday and Sunday you do bad. This is a constant cycle of not being able to lose any weight. So am I telling you to never go out with your friends, have a good time, eat some really good food like pizza and ice cream? No. I myself still love to do this stuff. I go out on the weekends occasionally with my friends. I just graduated college. I used to do this stuff all the time. But what I am telling you, if you really want to take fat loss seriously, you have to understand that you got to take some sacrifices and kind of limit yourself from doing these things consistently. By eating foods that you don't like the taste of, even though they might be really healthy, might be really low in calorie, if you don't like the taste, you're going to be much more likely to cheat on your diet on the weekend. So stick to foods that are high protein, low calorie, that you like the taste of, so sustainable. All right guys, so the fifth mistake that I see a lot of people make, and I'm saving this one for last because it honestly makes me the most mad out of all of them, but is when people do some sort of a fad diet. 
So if you guys don't know, fad diets are any kind of diet that you see online that people post about keto, paleo, vegan diet, low carb diet, all these kinds of diets that people post online about. So people will post online that they, for example, lost 20 pounds in a couple months or 10 pounds in two weeks or whatever the case may be. Other people will see these results and they'll be like, wow, this is insane. I gotta try it out for myself. If this person can do it, then I can do it too. But there's a lot of problems with these certain kinds of diets. Number one, they all have something similar with them, and that is the fact that they're all caloric deficit. No matter which one of these diets you do, if you're gonna lose weight, it's all coming down to the fact that you're in a caloric deficit. I know a lot of people personally that do keto, and they lose a ton of weight, and that's great, but it's, be it's not because of they're eating high fat, low carb, or whatever the case may be. It comes down to the fact that they're eating less than they're burning. A lot of these diets are not sustainable at all. For example, keto, you have to eat high fat, low carbs. For a lot of people, that's very unsustainable. For me personally, I eat about 300 grams of carbs every single day. It's about 50% of the calories that I consume. I could never even imagine doing keto. I'm still able to lose weight because I'm in a caloric deficit and I don't have to do any of these other kinds of diets to lose weight. Now by all means, if you can do keto and you enjoy the food that you're eating during keto and you're losing weight, then stick to that. But a lot of people are not gonna be able to sustain that kind of diet for a long period of time. And what happens is these people will go on the diet for a month or two, lose a significant amount of weight, 10 or 20 pounds, and then they'll get off the diet, they'll go back to eating terrible food like pizza and other stuff like that, high carb foods, but they'll be eating a surplus and they'll gain all that weight back very fast and they'll be right back to where they started before the diet. So the key when dieting is to find foods that you enjoy eating that are also low calorie. They don't have to be from this specific diet like keto or paleo, they just have to be low calorie, stick to high protein meals as well. Also do meals that will fill you up more. If you have a full bag of vegetables, it's probably about 100 calories and that whole bag of vegetables is going to be more likely to fill you up than something that's very small that might be more calories. So when you're trying to lose weight, the key to your diet should be eating low calorie foods that are also high in protein so it'll keep you full and eat more dense foods. For example, a great meal that I usually eat is chicken, rice, and vegetables. Might sound very bland, but if you use the right spices and the right oils, it can taste very, very good. And still at the same time, it can be very low calorie, very high protein, and keep you full for hours. All right guys, so this pretty much ends off today's video of the five biggest mistakes I see people make when they're trying to lose weight. Personally, I've made the majority of these mistakes myself, except I've never done a fad diet. But personally, I know a ton of people that have done these fad diets and have seen success, but when they get off the diet, they gain all that weight back, and I don't want you guys to do the same mistake. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like, click subscribe if you're new. Also, leave a comment down below if you guys have any suggestions for other videos that you want me to do in the future. I plan on making a lot of videos here this summer. I'll do anything that's fitness related, not fitness related, anything related to my diet. Anything that you guys want me to do, I'll do it. I'll make it happen. But until next time, guys, peace.